You only have one chance in life. You can only do it once right. There are no retakes. There's no going back in time. So give it all you have, all your love. But do be kind to yourself, as you will be making mistakes. These were the exact words of my mother while I was holding my firstborn. My parents have given me all opportunities in life, and that's exactly what I wished for my children. And I was so extremely sure that I would not make mistakes. While my son is being four, my daughter is nearly two. I've made my first very serious mistake already in raising them. What I've done is I've positioned technology at the very heart, and I've allowed them to engage with it as much as they liked. Thereby, also handed over the burden in responsibility. Besides being a parent, I have a background in entrepreneurship. I'm an investor in startups and an advisor, and I'm a senior innovation and technology manager, where I operate at the forefront of innovations. And we are all part of an incredible industrial revolution. This fourth industrial revolution is revealing things that we could not have thought of before. Possibilities are endless, and the developments go extremely fast. And everything I see. And in combination, maybe even with the words of Stephen Hawking saying that AI may replace humans altogether, I've also developed a sense of urgency, maybe even fear. And what I've done is I've put that fear right on my children. Besides me, there's my wife, who is besides a fantastic, loving mother. She's also a great teacher, and she's teaching children in the age from four to six. And it's her experience and knowledge that fuels our constant discussions we had in our house. The discussions where I believed that if we want the best for our children and give them all opportunities towards the future, we should bring technology to them as early as possible. Where my wife had her doubts. It was actually March this year when our discussions changed. My son started watching off some cartoons on his iPad. And it didn't take long before I could hear him learning colors on his iPad, and of course, it put a smile on my face. I looked at my wife because that thing was actually helping my child to develop. But there was something that triggered my wife. There was something triggering her to take a look at the screen. My son was learning colors by different colored Kalashnikov machine guns. My instant reaction was I pulled it out of his hands and I said, "Why are you watching this?" And he, of course, he wasn't able to respond to that. How could he? How could I think that he could carry the responsibility? Now, I could hear you think on their parental controls, but the key issue is is that even if you have a playground, they take away the, the dangerous items to make it safer. But still, strangers can walk in there. We don't let our children all by themselves on the playground, right? We check up on them. We want to make sure that they are fine and that they are safe. But how weird is it how we're treating technology? When we are handing over a piece of technology to our children, they have access to all sorts of application and content, and we can't rely on the platforms they are using. So, when I had all these thoughts, I started critically reflecting upon my own behaviour with technology. And to some of you, this may seem stupid; to others, maybe very recognisable. My phone. Is always within hand reach with me. It even sits now in my pocket. It sits with me on the dinner table when I'm asking my children how they're doing. It sits with me when I'm telling my children a bedtime story, and I'm even holding it when I'm give, giving my kids a kiss when they, before they go to bed. And the weirdest thing is that I have this aggressive need to constantly check my device. And this is exactly how those applications and platforms are being developed. They're being developed in such a way that they want you to come back over and over again and keep engaging, while you're being distracted, while you should have attention when you are with your children. An article I stumbled across was from、um, what was about Lauren Brichter, who developed the pull to refresh mechanism. To many, of course, known when you, for example, are on Twitter or LinkedIn, you just watch some content, you do the pull to refresh, and there's new content. In this article. The comparison was being made with a slot machine, and it's actually spot on. Every time you pull to refresh, you get new content, and although you know it's not going to be any valuable content, you still do it and you keep doing it. It becomes a really happy form of addiction we all have, and this is what we're showcasing our children. 
we're showcasing them that we can't control it. Bear in mind that children are like sponges. They mimic everything we do. They learn from us. So how can I expect them to treat technology responsible while I'm extremely irresponsible? I even made a bigger mistake the day when I brought home the Google Home device. I positioned it right in the center of our family events. It's right sitting there in the kitchen. And I love the thing. I mean, it's helping me with making grocery lists. It's telling me when to leave for an appointment through to uh, traffic jams. I'm, and it helps us to play songs. Any song we came up with, we just shout it out and the thing plays it. My son has been watching me. And right now, we have the circumstance that in the morning, afternoon, early evening, we're being treated all day long, the song Let It Go by the Frozen Disney soundtrack. <laughs> it's not only that my son is able to do this, my daughter, who is nearly two, is right now trying to do exactly the same thing. Only her wording isn't as strong yet, and Google Home hasn't picked it up yet. So although this is, of course, a very annoying but fun thing, there's something much more worrying happening. This was a few weeks ago that when my son wanted to run outside to play with his friends, just before he went out, I said, please put on your jacket. And he gave me the answer that every kid should give, saying, no, why? So I gave him the explanation and ended with the legendary words, because I'm also your father. And then my child challenged me and he said, why don't we ask Google Home? And we did. Google Home having access to all different sources and everything, let's see what it does. OK, Google, do I need to wear a jacket outside? And it gave a couple of things, and then it said, no, my son ran off. It dawned on me that this device was taking a parental role. And although this question with asking if he needs to wear a jacket is quite innocent, just think about what is going to happen when my son is going to ask different questions, questions about values in life. We don't know this stranger. It's a stranger who is giving my child parental advice, and I've brought it home. I've positioned it right into the kitchen. So my instant reaction was to get rid of everything that's out there, but instead of that, what I did is I started reaching out to experts. Experts in the field who are working a lot with children, I did a lot of, um, studied a lot of research, and all they came back with is exactly the same thing. Children are not capable of acting responsible, up to a very late age. Although we parents wish children to act responsible, they simply cannot. If you take, for example, um, if you would put a box of food in front of your child, with fruits, breads, candies, chocolate bars, lollipops and other things, and you would ask your child, all right, take a few things out that you want to have for lunch tomorrow at school, we all know that a child won't go for that apple and a banana, but it will go for the colorful candies. So as obvious as this seems, why do we think it's any different with technology? Why do we think children can actually make that decision? I'm quite fearful that when we look at the past and thinking back in the time of smoking, where parents were smoking around their children, and we see these pictures of children holding a cigarette in their hands as a joke, we all now think in horror. But so little known was back then, and I'm very fearful that the same thing is going to happen. I think in 15 years' time, that when we're going to watch videos of child's children swiping iPads, that we're going to have the same ideas. I think it won't be a whole lot different. Now, it was in September when one of my colleagues came up to me, and she had a really cool idea that she wanted to bring robots to the classroom of primary schools. She said, not, not for us to tell them how to use it, but just to let them explore and play with our guidance. So we ordered a bunch of Lego robots, and I decided to take one home. What I did is I created a safe environment for my son. I sat down together with him. I didn't leave him alone with it. And there was no good or wrong. There was nothing that he had to achieve. The only thing he had to achieve was play with it under my guidance. And while he was playing with it, I would ask him questions like, what do you see? What do you think? How does it make you feel? And I've seen the beauty of that when you do it together, you can reach so many more things, because the machine, a Lego robot, wouldn't ask a child how it would make him feel or what he's thinking. Now, 
In this entire part, I've really learned that joint exploration is for me the key thing on how we should treat technology with children. Technology provides incredible opportunities, and especially when you're looking at artificial intelligence. My absolute desire, hope, and wish would be that next time, or hopefully soon in the future, that before my son is walking outside, out to the garden, and he would ask Google Home, "Do I need to wear a jacket?" That Google Home is not going to give one straight answer, but that Google Home is going to say, "What do you think? Do you see the leaves moving outside? Is it cloudy? Is it raining?" I really believe that technology can help us to raise our children. However, it really is going to take time to evolve, and we can't rely on it yet. Therefore, and it will also be towards the future, the responsibility sits always with us. One thing, one development that, that frightens me a bit is that we are all chasing these platforms for not taking ownership. But again, there. It's it's a business model. There's no transfer in responsibility when you hand over the iPad to your child. It sits with you. When I look at the future, it's quite easy to get very sad and frightened. And I really like one phrase from Elon Musk, where he says, "When I wake up in the morning and think of the future, I want it to be great." And as a young father, I'm. More or less determining his future, and how could I be sad, or how could I be fearful, while creating his future? I believe the sooner the AI tools and everything evolve, the sooner it can actually help us to grow. Now, when I do presentations for students and executives around the world, what I always notice is one thing: is that when I talk about AI and other technologies, there's also a high level of excitement. People can't believe what is already possible; it's beyond imagination. What is reality today? But we always end off with one specific thing, and that's absolute fear. The fear that jobs become obsolete, that people are not going to be required anymore towards the future. And I have a different opinion on that. As with every industrial revolution, jobs changed, different tasks, not that jobs become obsolete. We have a shift in tasks, and I believe that the shift in tasks that we're going to see with this industrial revolution is going to be more focused about humanity than ever before. If you look at the four identified skills of the future, it's the four C's. We're looking at creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. To me, that's all very human, and apparently they are the skills of the future because they will be very hard to be replaced. Now, thinking back of my kids and the way I'm raising them, and give them all the opportunities that I've received from my parents as well, I have had serious doubts about how schools were handling these developments with children. That primary schools did not understand the massive gap between the developments out there and what they were teaching. But it's actually my wife and all her fantastic colleagues who are teaching children the skills of the future. They provide a safe environment for children to play, where they collaborate with each other, where they communicate with, their, with each other, where they are being creative, while still the safe environment is there and the, and the teachers are responsible. And most importantly, critical thinking. If a child would ask my wife a question as a teacher, my wife would not give a straight answer like Google Home does. My wife would always ask a child, "Why? And what do you think?" Helping children to develop their own thinking. So personally, I don't have any fear for the future, and no matter how alarming all AI developments are, I think we should not forget that we have own responsibility. I would definitely urge you to give it a try. Just switch off your technology, showcase something different to your children, but most of all, take the opportunity to play with your children, to give them the opportunity to explore the world virtually. But do it in joint collaboration, because in the end of the day, it's the parents who are responsible. Thank you.